I can't even... How would I even attempt to hold these up? Oh. Am I... Am I doing this right now? Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Oh dear. And it continues. Can it just not be hot in Australia for once? Just once? Hey guys, what's up? It's April. Today I'm going to share with you all of the books that I read in October. Currently there is still one and a half days left of October, but I'm not sure if I will finish my current book. But right now I have read 17 books. So let's get started. First book I read this month was Anne of the Island by L.M. Montgomery. This is the third book in the Anne of Green Gables series. So far, the next two books in the series haven't lived up to the first book. The first book is just perfect. But this one has definitely been my least favorite so far. I ended up giving it three stars just because it was really slow, really boring. The plot was kind of pointless. And there's also a new character introduced in this book that I wasn't a huge fan of, but I grew to kind of like her towards the end. But the thing that made me give this more than two stars was that the ship has finally sailed and I can't wait to see what happens to them next. Oh, I just love them together. Then I read Princess in Training, which is the sixth book in the Princess Diaries series, so I'm slowly making my way through this series. I end up giving this one a four out of five stars just because Mia's kind of annoying and being all teenagery, but it was still adorable and hilarious, so yeah. Then I read the next book, Party Princess, which is definitely my least favorite so far. I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars because I feel like the plotline in this book was completely irrelevant to the overarching storyline of the whole series and it was just pointless and not really that enjoyable to be honest. But I'm still really really excited to continue on with the series. I only have 4 books left before I finish. And then I read Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Raj. This is the first book in the Snow Like Ashes trilogy and books one and two are currently out and I loved this. It is a fantasy novel where different kingdoms in this world are based on seasons and I just loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I gave it four and a half stars but that's just because I guessed the plot, tri plot twist really early on like it was just so obvious to me, but I will say I absolutely loved the love interest, Prince Theron. Oh my gosh, I just feel like he's so different to other young adult fantasy love interests. He, like, he, he had such a strong personality and I just fell for him so hard and now I am so, so scared to read the second book because apparently that ship sinks. And I really, I don't, I don't, I don't want it to. Next, I read Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. This is a graphic novel, kind of. It is five short story graphic novels. And they're horror themed, so perfect for the Halloween time. I will say I loved the art style in this. Let me just, oh, hold up a minute. The art style is just beautiful and colorful. And that was the only thing I liked about it. <laughs> I felt like the stories were confusing and I felt like once I was really starting to get into a story and I was really excited to see what happens next, it just ended. <sighs> yeah, so I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. It was definitely disappointing considering a lot of the praise that it's been getting. Um, yeah. Wow, wow. Then there's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the illustrated edition. It's illustrated by Jim Kay. I kind of cheated putting this on my wrap up because I didn't read the whole thing, but I'm counting it anyway because, you know, yellow. The illustrations are ridiculously gorgeous. I just, I can't even deal. I have a complete flip through of this if you want to check out more of the illustrations. I will leave it up here if you want to watch it, but let me just show you my favorite pages. It's Hagrid's hut. 
Look at that. I die. Yeah, five stars, obviously. Then I read Life and Death by Stephanie Meyer. This is the reimagined Twilight gender bended thing that Stephanie Meyer pulled a Beyonce with. And yeah, I have a review up for this. I will link it up here if you want to watch it. I end up giving this a two out of five stars. But I explain why in my review. I mean, it was kind of fun and I liked how she changed the ending and everything, but it just didn't really work for me. Then I read one of my new favorite books of all time, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. It follows this kid called Wade and he lives in the future where basically the outside world is just horrendous. It's just fallen to pieces. So everyone sort of lives in a virtual world called the Oasis and you can do anything in the Oasis. You go to school in the Oasis, you can travel to different planets and like play games and like go shopping and you can do anything in the Oasis. Um, and the guy who created the Oasis died and left a hidden Easter egg in the Oasis um, with hidden clues and whoever finds the hidden egg gets to own the company and basically be a billionaire. Wade has been pulling all these clues together, trying to figure it out. It's full of 80s pop culture references and gaming and it's just, it's great. The world is just so interesting to read about. I just loved everything about this. It was fantastic. It was so great. Even though I wasn't even born in the 80s, um, and a lot of the 80s references just went straight over my head. It really didn't affect my enjoyment of the book, which was really cool. But yeah, this was absolutely fantastic and the little touch of romance was so cute. I gave this five stars. It was phenomenal. Next, I reread A New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. I actually really enjoyed rereading this. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did and I ended up giving it a five stars. I just, Jacob was so hot. He was so hot in this book. Oh, when he takes off his shirt to stop the bleeding in Bella's head when they're doing the motorcycle thing. Uh. I'm just having so much fun reliving my 12 year old fun times. It's a great time. It's a great time. Next, I reread another book, and that is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I first read this back in 2013, I think, and I liked it, but I didn't love it. But this time around, I liked it a lot more. I remember the first time I read it, I had a criticism of the way Kath treats her university studies. And I can totally say now that I understand completely why she did what she did. Um, because I went through a very similar thing recently and I totally get it. I totally get it now. Just if you haven't read Fangirl, just do it. It's cute, it's fluffy, it's light, it's adorable, it's relatable. And I'm giving this a four and a half out of five stars because I actually end up, ended up skimming over a lot of the Simon Snow fan fiction. I don't know, I was so invested in the real story that I just didn't really care about Simon. Yeah, I know. Then I read Daughters Unto Devils by Amy Lukovics, and this is for my work book club. It definitely wasn't my favorite. It was quite weird. It's about this girl and her and her family live in this cabin in the woods and they're very religious. And the main character has actually been sneaking off with this boy who comes from town every month or so. And she gets pregnant and then creepy things start happening and the family decides to move from the cabin um, to a cabin like two weeks walk away. So they go to this new cabin and they get there and blood is everywhere. Creepy stories are being told about the man who used to live in this cabin and creepy things start to happen. I will say that I wasn't scared at all until like the last 50 pages and then it started to really get creepy. Um, I really, really had real feelings for the main character's baby sister. Um, the baby was born blind and deaf and for some reason I just felt like this super strong connection to this baby and I don't know, it, it was really strange. Um, so yeah, 
it was just a very strange and creepy novel. Um, I definitely recommend it if you're in the mood for something short and creepy. Um, I ended up giving this a three and a half stars. Next, I reread yet another book, and that is The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. I reread this for my Goodreads book club read alongs with April. I loved this even more the second time around. I'm just obsessed with this. Oh, I just, I can't. I can't. If you haven't read this, I highly recommend that you do. It is creepy, it is addicting, it is thrilling, and Noah Shaw is beautiful. Five stars, again. And then I read the other read-alongs with April pick for October, which was Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allaire Sainz. This book absolutely blew my socks off. It was absolutely beautiful. It's about these two Mexican boys growing up and sort of figuring out who they are. And these characters were so real to me. They were real people in my mind. It also had some really important topics brushed on, like war and death and bullying and LGBTQIA and just so many things that teens you know should learn about and should know about and this all around was just the perfect discovery novel it was just beautiful and i gave it five stars one of my new all-time faves for sure next i read another new favorite of mine and it is every day by david lovett i've had this on my shelf for like two years or something and i just i didn't know when i was gonna get around to it eh, maybe in a couple of years but i am so glad that i picked it up now because it was fantastic. So it follows A, who doesn't actually have a body. And he does, see it's so hard because I go to call A a he because the first body that A inhabits is a male, but in reality A has no gender. So excuse me if I say the wrong thing here. But basically A wakes up in a different body every day. And one day, a inhabits the body of a boy called Justin and falls in love with Justin's girlfriend Rhiannon. So every day after that, when he slash she slash whoever wakes up in another body, he slash she slash so on just goes back looking for Rhiannon because he slash she slash whatever loves her. <laughs> so yeah, it was beautifully told and the thing that I absolutely adored about this book is that I had no idea where this was going. I mean usually when I go into a book and I get a feel for it I sort of know the general path that it's going to take but this one I had no idea how it was going to pan out and it was so like I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was so anxious. I was oh I just needed to know how this was going to pan out and it was just excellent. I already purchased the companion novel and I can't wait for the sequel that's going to be coming out hopefully next year. Oh, I just need it in my life. This also touched upon some really important topics like LGBTQIA, um, like drug abuse and like mental health and relationships of all kinds. And it addressed these things without sort of directly addressing them. I don't really know how to explain that, but it was just a masterpiece. Five stars. Flippin' amazing. <laughs> then I read Alex and Ada volumes one and two. These are by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughan, and I loved these. I picked these up um, because of Whitney over at Whitney Novels saying that it is her favorite graphic novel series, and I totally see where she's coming from. It's crazy good. I just, I love it so much. I know a lot of people say that they love the story but they don't love the art because it's very simple. Um, but I think it really goes with the story. And I really like it. I don't know, it doesn't need anything extravagant. I feel like it's enough, you know? And it doesn't need to be overdone. But yeah, I'm obsessed with these. I am waiting for the third one to come in the mail. It's taking its sweet time. But yes, I gave both of these five stars and it is only a trilogy. So if you want a quick graphic novel series, this one is definitely one that I recommend. I gave them both five stars. Okay, the last book I read 
was part of like a book swap thing that me and my friend from work are doing. So basically I brought in one of my favourites, which was The Knife of Never Letting Go. You can probably see that there's an empty space here. Um, yeah, I gave him that to read and he lent me Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. This is a literary fiction totally out of my comfort zone. He's just obsessed with it and I hated it. <laughs> it's basically a 282 page letter from a reverend on his deathbed to his six-year-old son and he intends for his son to read this letter when he's a grown man. Um, so it essentially has no plot line. It's very boring and quite slow and yeah I can see why people like it I can see why people think it's beautiful um, but it just wasn't for me it was way too preachy especially me being an atheist I mean I can appreciate you know the book as it is and I can appreciate why people like it but um yeah not a fan I gave this one and a half stars and he's gonna be so mad at me. Mm. Yeah, so those are the 17 books that I have read so far but like I said before there is a day and a half left and I am currently on page 127 of Demon Road by Derek Landy. This is also for my work book club and I actually marked this as DNF on Goodreads at page 72 but I decided to pick it back up and give it another go um, because I really wanted to be able to discuss it at book club. So I'm enjoying it a little bit more. I just think the main character is really annoying and the way she handles things is just, I just want to punch her in the face. But yeah, we will see how this goes. If I do end up finishing it before the month ends, I will leave my rating here. And if I don't finish it, I will leave a picture of Lunar and Moon Boots. Yeah. So these are all the books that I read in October. My favorites were definitely Ready Player One, Every Day, Aristotle and Dante, and the Alex and Ada graphic novels. I had such a good reading month. Oh, it was just so great. Anyways, I will see you guys with a new video very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.